everybody welcome back to magic city morse today we're going to be doing a video sort of about how we prepare for eggs um, we're going to be putting together some egg boxes today so we're going to show you how we do that and i'm going to also show you our three girls that we're expecting to lay soon i think priya is probably going to lay first she's looking really 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 uncomfortable you're going to definitely be able to tell when you see her. And so this is just going to be sort of educational, kind of about the process of how we sort of start to prepare for the eggs to arrive. And this is Sol. She's our sub-adult super pastel desert ghost. She's really, really bright. Um, we're waiting on her to get fully mature so that we can breed her one day. Desert ghost is actually another recessive uh, gene or morph and we'll be getting a male one day for her so we will be doing a desert ghost project within the next probably two or three years so um, without further ado I'm going to kind of show you how the girls are looking and then we're going to go into talking about the egg boxes and how to actually put them together to get them ready for when you need to put the eggs inside and you're hanging out with me we're up here after work on a Friday so it's pretty relaxed evening and we don't have too much going on so we're able to come up here and shoot some video here are some of the other snakes in their enclosures harley's on the bottom eden is in the middle and then ripley is at the top over here looking at eden what's she doing what are you doing snakey that's snakey Snicky, snicky, snicky. Okay, so this is one. You remember that incubator I told you guys that died not long after the eggs from our first clutch were pibbing? This is another one like it. It's newer, but we don't use this anymore for ball python eggs because of what happened. So we still have it. Are you talking to the snake? She's so silly. She's talking to him. But we might use this in the future for like corn snakes or hognut snakes. Anything else we breed that might need a different temperature. But we will not be using these for ball python eggs. This is our DIY Coleman cooler incubator that my husband built. It is, how many quarts is it? It's 120 quarts. And then we've got this nice Vivarium Electronics BE200 thermostat for it. We've got to turn it on and go ahead and test it and make sure that everything's good with the temperatures. Yeah. And that's also like another thing we want to do is, you know, we don't want to run this incubator if it doesn't have any eggs in it for a long time. But when we know it's coming up on time for one of the females to lay, we definitely want to test this out. So this along with the egg boxes that actually go inside the incubator is what we're going to get ready. Okay, so this is what it looks like on the inside. It's pretty cluttered right now. But basically in the bottom is a really wide heat tape or a reptile heat tape and then we've got the cord basically um, taped in there with aluminum heat tape we've got some extra water bottles that help retain heat in case the power goes out we'll obviously put more water bottles in here there's eggs in here we have these um, green wants to tell you guys too we have these PVC pieces that hold up this light filter what it's really called you could also call it a grate if you want but this is basically the shelf that's suspended over top of the uh, reptile heat tape so that the egg boxes aren't sitting directly on the heat tape because that would be bad the eggs would overheat we've got these temperature probes so we've got four so normally we'll have about four egg boxes in here at one time if we ever need more of these we can always get them you can get them at the pet store you can get them in bulk on amazon but they're basically thermometers and they're little digital ones and they have a probe on the end like this and they do have these little suction cups on there you don't have to use them but we actually put these probes inside the actual individual egg boxes so that we can have a reading of what the actual temperature is inside the individual egg boxes because that's important too it's going to be hotter inside the egg box than it is in just this entire incubator so it's going to be one temperature in the incubator space but it's also going to be a hotter temperature inside the actual egg box so we want to make sure that's good and this is the probe to that um, thermostat i was showing you so this is going to basically tell us the temperature inside the actual incubator and like i said these little individual thermometers are going to tell us the temperatures inside each egg box and then we have these fans these are basically like pc fans and they've been screwed into the sides 
And this is to help circulate the air throughout the incubator. This is really, really important. Now, there's another way that you can do an incubator like this, you guys. You can actually use water in the bottom if you don't want to use reptile heat tape. And you can use um, aquarium heaters. And you can make sure they're on the right settings. You can check your temperature and everything. But that's another way you can use these incubators to actually keep a lot of humidity in here. If you ever go on the Reach Out Reptiles channel, Garrett Hartle has a video on that. Basically, you guys, the eggs incubate for about 65 days. Usually by the 65 day mark, they all start pipping. Um, and what that means is the babies are actually using their natural egg tooth that they're born with to hatch out of the eggs themselves. They're tearing through the eggs. And what we do, are you having fun? Are you having fun? What we do on day 65 when it's safe is we will go ahead and cut the eggs and help the babies. And we don't take the babies out. We just peek in there, see what morph combos we think we get, and then we let the babies come out on their own. It's very, very important. You don't want to pull the babies out of the eggs too quick because they need to stay in there. You can actually damage their umbilical cord and it can kill them. They need to stay inside of the egg and absorb the yolk until they're ready to come out. That yolk inside the egg is actually the baby snake's first meal. When they all emerge and hatch, you keep them all together in a moist tub, usually with paper towels. That's the best way. And then about two weeks after hatching, they're going to have their first shed. And when they have their first shed, you can offer them their first meal. Nine times out of ten, you're going to have to offer live. Some people are able to get hatchlings on frozen thawed right away. We've never been able to do that, but our second clutch did definitely go on frozen thawed a lot quicker. By the third meal, all of those babies were on frozen thawed. And you don't have to transition them out of frozen thawed if you don't want to, but usually for the customer's sake, a lot of customers are going to be more uncomfortable feeding live than not. So if you can get those babies on frozen thawed, that is kind of a major selling point. Okay guys, so here's a look at a couple of our egg boxes. I actually got these egg boxes from the Dollar Tree. We use vermiculite as our medium. You can also, if you want, use perlite, but that is a little bit dustier. Um, but we like to use vermiculite. And this is Glad Press and Seal. So this is what you're going to be using on top of the boxes to seal them up. It helps keep the humidity in and what I'm doing is I put some water in here and what you want to do is you want to have like a um, same ratio of water to vermiculite. You don't want the vermiculite to be too wet to where when you squeeze it in your hand there's water dripping. You really really want it to be clumpy like that. So when you get that clumpy consistency that's really really good. It ensures that the vermiculite is moist but not too moist and it's going to help you keep your humidity really good inside the egg boxes. Now, um, one thing I want to talk to you guys about is we set our eggs directly onto the vermiculite. Some people don't like to do that. They actually like to use like a grate or one of those light filters I showed you we have in the incubator. Something to suspend the eggs over top of the moist vermiculite. There's people that get worried about mold, but the truth is, is if you have your ratio right with your water and your vermiculite and your vermiculite's not too moist, your eggs will not have any molding issues. So now what I'm doing is I am putting that temperature probe in there with the little digital thermometer I told you guys about. And then I'm placing the Glad Press and Seal over that. And then over top of the Glad Press and Seal, you're going to actually put the lid to the tub on. So this is going to seal all of that humidity and you need a lot of humidity for these eggs. So that's very, very important. You don't want your eggs to dry out inside of the incubator. Now that that part's done and I've shown you that, we're going to check on our females. Do you think they're going to lay eggs? You think it's going to be this weekend? You think? What do you think? Dada. You want dada? I want dada too. He's, dada. he's working right now. Dada. He'll be home soon. Dada. Okay, so um, Priya was at the back, but now she's right here. Look. Uh, how she's laying on her side like this. She's very uncomfortable, you guys. That's why I think that it's going to be very, 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 very soon that she does lay. I don't know how many eggs she would lay this time. Last time she gave us 13. So we'll just have to see this time, guys. So when she first laid any of her eggs, she laid about 10 or 11 of them. And we came back up here later that night and saw that there were actually 13. So we made another egg box. And that's one thing I want you guys to remember is your female may not be done laying. You may think that she's done, but she may not be done. 
And so that's very important. You really, really want to give her like time to finish laying. So I'm willing to bet that it's going to be this weekend or early next week, something like that. Just by the way she's acting and how she's positioning herself and her demeanor. So it definitely seems like to me that it's going to be pretty soon. And if you don't remember, she was paired with Falcor three times. He's our Banana Mystic Potion. They can make Blue Eyed Lucy's together. That is one of the morph combos that they can make. Um, actually, Mojave and Lesser combo uh, bells. So we're really, really hoping for that. That's what we're shooting for. And there will be some other really cool combos in there as well. So we're really, really excited. Now I'm going to show you Kadabra. Now Kadabra is about, I would say, in third place. She was paired with Falcor two times in a row, of course, with breaks and making sure they eat and everything. But the third time we tried to pair her with them, she didn't want to pair with them. So there was about a month in between um, the second and the third pairing. So she's a little bit behind. Um, you can see she's not as thick as Zahara or Priya, but I definitely think that she's growing her eggs. And it will probably be another month or so before she ends up looking as big as Priya. Here's the horror, guys. So she's been in her water bowl for a while. And that's why a lot of the water has gotten out. And she's got a little bit of discoloration right here. Because some of the cocoa husk has actually gotten into her water. But she's actually exiting the water now. She's been sitting in the water for quite a while. So... We think she could be definitely going to lay soon, too. So, we're definitely keeping an eye on Zahara. Now, if Zahara lays eggs, that would be from the pairings with Sulian last year, which, you know, Sulian's no longer with us. We sold him. He was our super fly 100% head clown. Zahara here is an albino 100% head clown, and that was eight eggs that we got out of them. There was only one hatchling that ended up having the visual clown gene, and he was a firefly clown. We kept him. He was a holdback. So all the other babies are sold, but we do still have that firefly clown produced from both of these 100% het clowns. So if she does have any more babies, we may get some more clown combos. We have no idea. We'll have to see. But that's basically it, guys. I wanted to show you how we make our egg boxes. I wanted to show you our incubator, and I wanted to show you how the girls are doing. This is Gia. She's our lesser GHI. So we'll be breeding her next year, hopefully. Yeah. We'll be breeding her next year, hopefully, with Lucian. So to do some more Bell stuff and to do some GHI Mojave stuff, which would be really cool. So we hope you guys enjoyed today's video. And stay tuned because we really, really think some eggs are going to be dropping soon. See you next time.